So Kevin, I'm glad you came back to the festival. What keeps, what keeps you coming back? to the Wild and Scenic Film Fest? Well, mostly that it's such cool people. I mean, you meet the nicest people here. If you took away everything else, the great food, the great films, the great music and all that, you still got all these amazing people who are obviously motivated by love, love of humanity, love of nature, love of each other. You know, in a, in a non-sexualized, non-Hollywood, two people pairing off, isolated on an island kind of love to big love, and I think that's the transition we're in right now. We're going from a world where money values ruled over the life cycle to one where life values will rule over the money cycle, where we use money in commerce, but we subordinate it to social justice and environmental restoration. And there's an automatic element to that because as the natural resource base gets depleted, the profitability of saving resources goes up and the profitability of coming up with renewable substitutes for things like plastic based on petroleum, et cetera, that's all accelerating now. So this gap between what is and what could be, a lot of people are making that jump and realizing, wow, we can save humanity from itself. It's within our power technologically if we can get our hearts and our minds aligned with each other enough and forget this them stuff that realize there is no them, it's just us. I spent about 30 years writing books about the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund and the World Trade Organization and big bad corporations. And I got to a point where after about 10 or 12 books, I said, you know, maybe I should start looking at what we replace all of this with. So the left got very good at protest and you know, how many bad corporate leaders can dance on the head of a pin, you know, that kind of thing. And we filled up bookshelves with all this analysis of what's wrong with the system instead of saying, let's create a different system. So that's why Global Exchange does fair trade stores. We do reality tours where we take people to 30 countries. The green festivals is all positive. I mean, there might be some anti-corporate stuff in there about climate change or whatever, but 99.9% .9 of the event is about here's another way we can do this. Here's another way we can feed everybody and clothe everybody and house everybody without destroying the environment in the process. So you're getting this triple bottom line economy evolve where financial sustainability, what's usually called profit, is balanced with social justice and environmental restoration, not just conservation, because we've destroyed so much. And it, it's the linking of those three. And what I'm focused on now is trying to take the green festival model into a permanent real estate model. Green Mart, the green everything store, Eco Mall, with affordable teacher housing up above for two reasons. Teachers are your best social multiplier. If you educate them about the environment, bah, it's, and it's gonna get spread to the generation that's gonna be running the world when you and I are in diapers drooling on ourselves and the environmental crisis is like really bad, worse than anything we can imagine in our worst nightmares. But also, all school districts and cities have unused property, often in good locations, that's sitting vacant. And you can build teacher apartments. I'm working with developers and architects. We've got a model where you can put that teacher housing in. This is here in the state of California. And the rents will be about 50% of normal rents. So the teachers are getting cheap rent. They're getting educated eco-literacy right where they live. They don't have to go far to shop for the best green products. We already filter for the green festival. There's only about 300, 400 companies that meet our criteria. So out of those 300, 400, if we do another cut of say the 90 to 150 best, you've got a pretty cool store with just the best products, the best. Where are you gonna do your pilot? First one's in San Francisco at 16th and Mission which is where our office has been for 21 years. And right out my window, there's a vacant lot owned by the school district. It's massive. You can go up about 80 feet. It's right on a BART station, two major bus lines, and it's been sitting vacant for years. Kevin, in what you're talking about then, as far as the everyday person really being involved, you know, like, for example, we have Beth Terry here who started Plastic Challenge and got, um, Brita water filters to be recycled, for example, but a lot of people just feel like they're not able to make that change. So it was what you're talking about, a place, a hub where people would be able to go to have platform. that support, right? An aggregating So platform. creating the platform. I think what's working right now on the internet is aggregation. The reason Facebook is in the news and valued at 
you know, more dollars than General Motors and Ford put together is because of aggregation. Anytime you can get a lot of creative people to connect, it's the synapse, it's not you or I, it's what's the connection between us. If it's eh, negative, that's not cool. If it's all loving and sweet and compassionate and helpful, we were put here to be of service to each other because we're not separate entities. We're like bees or wolves or any social animal. We exist in a network of relationships. So we can now prove scientifically that if I do an act of kindness to you, your serotonin levels go up, it's a neurotransmitter, my serotonin levels go up. Anyone who observes that act of kindness, people just hearing me or seeing me see this on a video, their serotonin levels go up. So we have the ability to self-heal each other by being generous of spirit to you, I improve my health, I strengthen my immune system. So even if I didn't give a damn about anybody in the world, I would be kind and courteous and sweet because that's good for me. Yeah. If you're nasty and you have tension, that produces cortisol and it undermines your immune system and makes you die sooner. So where do you see your involvement with that like in 10 years from now when you're thinking about the legacy? Well, I'm working on a three-piece real estate model. One is the downtown commercial residential, Green Mart on the bottom, teacher housing or first responder housing, cops, firefighters, EMTs, city workers, because all cities are in fiscal crisis. They need good housing for their city workers near where they work, they can walk to work. Second piece is eco-industrial park. This is on the industrial side of town. All cities have unused property on the industrial part of town. You need to have a place where you're doing recycling and composting and putting liquid compost and recycled soda bottles and selling it as plant food and, you know, gumball machines with seed bombs in them. You put in a couple quarters, you get a seed bomb and you throw it in vacant lots and it grows indigenous crops. So that's eco-industrial park, eco-university. And then the third piece is a rural property that's a working farm, teaching farm. All of these are enterprise and education. It's a working farm, teaching farm. It's a retreat center for the urban groups and the green companies to have their strategic retreats. It's a training camp for nonviolent direct action, stuff like that. And it's an intentional retirement community for my generation who, we have PhDs, we have skills, we've taught lawyers, doctors, etc. They're gonna teach for free in the Eco University, just like our speakers in the Green Festival. We don't pay them, they speak for free. And in exchange, they get to live in this very cool, hip, rural facility that's like paradise on earth, permaculture, eco everything. And that's a soft way to go into the next stage of uh, being wrapped in hemp and buried in the ground and being worm food. I think everybody's got to define their activism in their own way. I think what people should always do is start with something you really enjoy. If you love kids, get involved with the school. If you love the river, get involved with the groups that are doing river work. There are groups doing every possible thing you could ever be interested in. If you're into professional tiddlywinks, you can find a group that's doing that. So it, it's mostly about find that soft entry point, the thin end of the wedge to get started. And you'll find that, one, you know, people come in my office and they go, oh man, you guys must be trying, you must be worn out trying to save the world. We're not trying to save the world. We're just living in a way that's more fun. If you're putting positive energy out into the world and you're rectifying problems and you're bringing more joy and less suffering into the world, the Chinese have a great saying. They say, suffering shared is suffering halved, joy shared is joy doubled. So that's the magic of human mathematics. By coming together, we create new energy that's healing and that can solve these problems. There's no problem we confront that can't be dealt with, but it requires political will. The main lacking ingredient is courage. You know, you hear a lot of cynicism. I lecture on college campuses and you hear this, yeah, I know, but what are you gonna do about it? It's a cop out, right? So what I say is cynicism is what passes for insight when courage is lacking. And it's that main element of courage. Let's get our backbone straight, get up on our hind legs, and say, okay, let's fix this. And that's what we see traveling around the world is places that are working and positive and kind of places where you'd like to live and be friends with these people, it's because they got organized, just like this film festival. Some people got together and said, let's have a film festival. And now nine years later, it's this big deal thing. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. You're awesome. Thanks. Thanks for Appreciate being here and, and uniting people.
think it's really important. My pleasure. Thank you.